I genuinely thought these were the same in my son of trying to bribe me short, so uh, here today we're going to clarify that. Hi guys, I'm later than usual to the this new device party from Sonoff because I've been sitting on this PRR sensor. This is SNZB03P, the latest PRR sensor from Sonoff. I knew a device like this is on the horizon because a couple of months ago I actually covered the release of the latest product line from Sonoff, the Zigbee line, which uh, at that time they introduced the button and the temperature sensor with humidity. You can check that uh, video in a corner. But in my anticipation, I completely missed it because first Sonoff released human presence sensor and then when they actually sent me the new PR, you hardly can tell them apart. I know now it's obvious, but I was super excited to open that orange case and I completely missed this, so that one's on me. I know now the difference is rather obvious, especially if you're looking at the packaging. You could tell that this is slightly different, but you have to admit that these two are quite similar. The only significant difference is this. One of them doesn't need a cable because it's a true Zigbee end device. That one that doesn't need a cable is obviously the latest son of PR. The previous one, son of presence sensor, human presence sensor, needed a USB Type-C power plug to be connected constantly because it simply uses too much power. And if you want to know know how to use this and uh, what is it good for, then I have also a video in a corner for you explaining the advantages of this nifty $15 sensor. From outside it almost looks like a twin. It's the same magnetic design of the base in which it just snaps in and you can position it in almost any way apart from the obvious one which you cannot make it parallel to the surface. And there you have your bloopers for this video. And the magnetic base itself, it can be attached to various surfaces using either 3M tape or screws because it comes with a small template and a couple of screws to mount it to your preference. Now the sensor itself, it's almost featureless. On the front, we have a very familiar dome, which is present on most of the infrared sensors and a single button for pairing that if you hold it for five seconds, it will enter the pairing mode. Now on the other side, well, there is really nothing else. You can untwist it to open it to reveal additional battery compartment. And this battery is CR2477. So it's one of those thicker coin cell batteries. And Sonoff tells us that it should last up to three years. Obviously it's not something I've tested. However, I would trust them on that. They probably did some calculations and that would be correct. In my opinion, if the device like that lasts over a year, I'm really happy with this. But motion detection isn't the only trick in its sleeves and this little sensor can detect the ambience or light ambience in your surroundings. Now that detection's only limited to bright or dim and you have no access to a threshold so you won't be able to customize it, but the option is there and you can set up additional rules just using the sensor itself to uh, clarify those distinctions. But where things got really excited is about the timeout. Now, previously I've covered a Gara sensor, the videos in the corner, and that sensor had the fastest timeout setting. You were able to set as little timeout as one second. Whether it's useful for you or not, it was nice to see it. Obviously, the sensor would probably burn through a battery much quicker. Knowing that this is a Gara, it was much more expensive but this sensor come with minimum time or setting of five seconds, which is super cool. And I generally don't think of scenarios in which I would go lower than 10 seconds anyway. That sets it miles apart from the previous model, which would have a minimum 30 seconds of a timeout and you could not modify it. So whether you like it or not, this is almost the fastest sensor you can buy right now when it comes to Zigbee PRR on the budget. So how much do you have to spend it to get one of these? Now the previous generation would set you back $9.5. This little beauty is almost $15. And this one sits in between, which will cost you $11.90. I'd say it's a nice middle ground. You're paying two and a half dollars more to get that super fast timeout, uh, the ability to sense light and new and improved design but you're obviously not getting as fancy human detection as you would with a presence sensor. 
But personally, I would also hesitate from comparing one to the other because they serve slightly different purposes. Mainly, this needs power supply and the latest Sonoff PR works on the battery. And that distinction, well, might be important to you. Usually with those things, I kind of open them apart and take a look inside to see what is actually inside and how it works, but Sonoff has revealed on the product page what is actually inside, and this is EFR32 MG22IC Zigbee. This is the same IC that they've used in the latest Son of Zigbee lineup, so I'm not going to open it because you already have that information and, uh, well, that thing has proven to be a difficult to open. So what is it like in use? First of all, you're gonna need a Zigbee hub and some of have a couple of options for you to choose. You can either go for Son of Zigbee Bridge Pro and you have to go for the Pro version if you want to access the settings to decrease the timeout. The default timeout on this device, I think, is 60 seconds before you set it to something else. So you can either use Son of Zigbee Pro, you can use NS Panel Pro or iHost. And since I've got iHost near me, I decided to use iHost to actually connect to it and check it out. Powering was super simple, hold the button for 5 seconds and wait until it connects to the iHost and there you have it. However, one thing that was missing at start was actually settings for this thing's timeout. It took a couple of minutes for the settings to appear on the settings option of the motion detector, after which I was able to set the custom timeout starting from 5 seconds all the way to 60 seconds. And once that was set, all I had to do is press the button on the device once more time to confirm the settings or probably wake up the device and the settings and confirm it and the new settings would apply. And soon enough, I've checked my iHost, I logged in and went to the logs and I discovered that yes, this will trigger every five seconds. And if you're in the same room, obviously the detection time might vary slightly. You can re-trigger it after five seconds if you meet the conditions, but if you continue moving on, those detection times are gonna be slightly longer because as soon as you trigger it again and the previous motion didn't expire, it will simply um, extend the time of showing that uh, you are within that time of motion detection. So bear that in mind when you're planning a positioning of this device and when you're troubleshooting your timeout um, settings. Encouraged by this, I went to automation panel to check out the options available for motion detection. And with this little sensor, I had four different options for motion detection, no motion detection, and two options for detecting motion during bright times and dim times. As I mentioned before, there is no way of controlling whether bright times occur, um, which is a shame, there's no thresholding for it. But for the most automations that aren't crucial at the dusk and dawn periods of times, it should be fine. Another thing I wanted to test was the range. It's advertised six meters, but my rooms are much smaller than that, so I didn't really get to confirm whether it works at the end of that six meters or not. But one thing to remember, this is infrared, so you will use the heat detection of humans or pets. So if you have pets, be wary of the fact that it might trigger when the pets are running around. It depends on the pets, depends on where in the spectrum it's gonna be, etc. Overall, this is an interesting Zigbee proposition, but it's a Zigbee 3.0, and as such, I was really keen to uh, test it with different ecosystems. And I started with Alexa, because I have Alexa equipped with a Zigbee hub. And the pairing process was uneventful. I pressed the button, wait a couple of uh, moments, and the son of motion sensor has appeared on the list of Alexa devices. What was disappointing was the fact that I was not given access to the brightness and dimness uh, triggers. I wasn't able to customize that. I would only have access to the occupancy data and there was no settings to trigger custom timeout and by default that was set to 30 seconds. At least that's what it seems like in my quick tests. It's clear to me that if you want to connect this sensor to, for example, your Alexa ecosystem, you're better off using something like iHost and going via Matter, so you could actually have a custom setting control instead of trying to pair this directly to your, for example, Alexa hub with Zigbee and using it that way. It's not to say that you can't, it's just certain options won't be available to you. One benefit of me being absolutely late to this party is the fact that Zigbee to MQTT is already set up and supported. So it didn't really take me much. All I had to do is just uh, go to the Zigbee to MQTT dashboard, click on pairing, hold the button for five seconds and wait until the device 
will show up in the list of my devices. And because it's already supported, I didn't have to really do anything at all. What I did confirm, that you could see the occupancy being present, and you could see also the brightness levels around the sensor itself just right there in a the dashboard, so everything was working fine even when I was covering the sensor to imitate different conditions. And in exposed section, I was able to set and successfully execute custom timeout. So when I set the custom timeout to five seconds, it was actually working fine without any problems. So if you're planning on using this sensor in your DIY home automation, whether using Zigbee to MQTT with no dread, or you're trying to connect that to home assistant, this device is already set up for you and you can start playing about. Apart from illumination and occupancy, you also have access to a battery in both states, the voltage and battery level, and obviously the link strength. Those are the uh, details that you can get via payload. Now, if you're interested in what you can do with this, especially with battery information, I have a really nice uh, node red flow, which will let you know uh, when your batteries um, are running down and send you a nice notification to your Android phone. So if you're interested in that, hey, video in the corner. So guys, as far as I remember, the biggest complaint about these things was always the timeout. In most of the sensors, it was either a minute or 30 seconds, which was proven too much for most of you. And we finally have an alternative, which isn't expensive. It lasts for probably years, depending on the settings. And you can buy it right now. So if you're looking something to complement your home automation setup and you don't want to get a little bit more expensive uh, human detection sensor, oops, that requires the cables, then you can opt out for Sonoff SNZB03P and get yourself one of these. I'm gonna include the links to this and a couple of other Sonoff sensors in the description of this video, so do check it out. And if you've seen my tech drop video short about the sensor, you also know that I have a new power meter enabled socket from Sonoff and a contact sensor, and I'll be talking about them in due time. So you know how it works. I do not have a posting schedule. If you want to know what's coming up next, then hey, use YouTube tools provided. I don't have to teach you that. There's a couple of social media links on the screen, which you should use if you want to get in touch, start a conversation with me and let me know what you think. Obviously, there is a comment section below as well. So big thanks to someone for sending me gadgets early, as always, even though I'm late. And thanks to you guys for watching. Hope to see you soon. Bye.